Hello. So we're jumping into red. We're going through all of the new cards in Magic the Gathering, the Brothers War. There's 290 cards in total. We're doing one color at a time. We're taking our time with it, though. We're in no rush. We're going through every single new card and reprint. Anything that's in the boosters is in this list. Um, we've done white and blue and black so far. Lots of leaning into what those colors are known to do. Lots of new mechanics such as prototype, uh, returning mechanics such as unearth. Um, let's get into red and see what red has to offer. I'm assuming lots of artifact uh, and burn spells. Let's find out. The first, again, we're doing this I, I know, in order of set number. So this is going to be alphabetical. There's no rhyme or reason why this is in the order it's in other than it is the order I didn't. There's no rhyme or reason that I'm showing these in order because it's just by set number. Um, I didn't structure this. It's all alphabetical. Um, let's get into it. The first red card we're going to look at is arms race. It's three and a red for an enchantment. Uh, then you can pay three in a red. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. That artifact gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So this is really good if you've got some big honkers that uh, are more than four mana. You can haste it onto the battlefield. Attack with it. If you're playing red-black, uh, which you most likely are if you're trying to do the graveyard aggro thing. Um then hopefully you can bring it back from your graveyard to your hand and do this again, turn after turn after turn. Um, That's pretty cool. Next up is Bitter Reunion. Uh-oh, Urza and Misha are arguing. Mommy and Daddy are fighting again. One and a red for an enchantment. Bitter Reunion enters the battlefield. You may discard a card. If you do, draw two cards. Pay one, sacrifice bitter reunion. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So you can filter something in your hand that's going to be stuck there for a while, get another creature maybe, and then play it. And then you can sacrifice bitter reunion and everything you played uh, will get haste and you can attack with it all. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got Brotherhood's End. This is the, the start of the end where they start fighting each other. One red red for a sorcery. Choose one. Brotherhood's end deals three damage to each creature and planeswalker. That's that's a lot of damage for three mana. Each creature and planeswalker? Or you can destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less. That is rough. Oh my god. Okay. The only thing like close to this in the last set was like seven mana. This is just three mana deal three damage to everything. That's that's going to be rough. That's going to get countered, I hope. Next up, we have Conscripted Infantry. Two and a red for a 3-1 human soldier creature. Uh, when infantry dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. Not bad. Pretty standard. Dwarven Forge Chanter. Hey, we got a dwarf. One and a red for a 1-3 dwarf wizard creature with ward pay two life. And prowess. So this gets plus one, plus one every time you cast a non-creature spell. Uh, that's pretty cool. Lot, I'm assuming there's going to be lots of prowess in red because uh, red likes spells. And this dwarf wizard having... Uh, ward to life is pretty good for two mana. Next up, we have Excavation Explosion. Two and a red for a sorcery. Excavation Explosion deals three damage to any target. Create a tapped Power Stone token. Pretty cool. The Fall of Krug. Four black. Black. Oh my god. Brain. Help me out. Four red red for a sorcery. Choose target opponent. Target destroy target land that player controls. The fall of Krug deals three damage to that player and one damage to each creature they control. So this is really good in 1v1, but it's also really good in uh, commander. Because you can pick any opponent. 
Awesome. Next up, we have Falaji Chain Dancer. Three and a red for a 2 4 human soldier to creature. And it has pay two Falaji Chain Dance Dancer, gains double strike until end of turn. So it can deal four if you pay for the ability. That's pretty good. Next up, we have Felden Ronum Excavator. Ronum? Ronum. Um, that kind of looks like Urza's staff, doesn't it? One and a red for a 2-2 human artificer legendary creature with haste. Felden Ronum Excavator can't block. Whenever Felden is dealt damage, exile that many cards from the top of your library. Choose one of them. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. Nice. Helps you filter the top of your deck and play the things you want to play. Pretty cool. Next up, we have Giant Cinder Maw. Oh, dinosaur. Two and a red for a 4-3 dinosaur beast creature with trample. Players can't gain life. Dang. Not even just your opponent, but like players can't gain life. That's pretty great. That's very red. That's very, very, that's a very red card right there. See how it's all red? It's very red. It does very red things. Next up, we have Goblin Blast Runner. We've got a new goblin. One red for a 1-2 goblin creature. Goblin Blast Runner gets plus 2, plus 0, oh, and has menace as long as you sacrificed a permanent this turn. Interesting. Okay. And then we've got Horned Stone Seeker. Look at this little... This is a... Um, horned Dragon? What are they called? Everyone on Reddit had them as a pet for a little while. I keep wanting to say Komodo Dragon, but it's not a Komodo Dragon. It's a Horned Lizard? It's one in a red for a 2-2 two -two Lizard creature with menace. Horned Stone Seeker... When Horned Stone Seeker enters the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token. When it leaves the battlefield, sacrifice a power stone. So it's just there to collect power stones, and uh, it's got a nice little basket on its back. Imagine if lizards learned how to basket weave. Bearded dragon, that's the term for it. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Did you see the dwarf? We got a new dwarf. Did you see it? Did you see it, or did you miss it? Answer me. That angel earlier looks sick. Nice. Okay. I won't go back and show off the dwarf again. Next up, we've got mechanized warfare. Oh, yeah. That angel did look really intense. And it's an artifact angel. Crazy. Mechanized warfare is one red red for an enchantment. If a red or artifact source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls... It deals that much damage plus one instead. So it just tax on one damage to any sort of damage that your red or artifact sources might deal. Pretty cool. Very aggro. Next up, we've got Mishra Excavation Prodigy. This is Teenage Angst Mishra. We saw Teenage Angst uh, Urza earlier. Two and a red for a 2-1 human artificer legendary creature with haste. You can pay one, tap Mishra to discard a card, draw a card. So you cycle. Pretty good. Whenever you discard one or more artifact cards, add two red mana to your mana pool. This ability triggers only once each turn. That's really good. So you can really, like, it has haste too, so you can do this right away. You pay, you play it for three, pay the one to discard a card, draw a card. So technically, if you got a Power Stone on like turn two or one, you could play this on three, immediately discard something, draw something, get two mana, cast something else. Your advantage just snowballs in that one turn. That's pretty great. Oh, here's the red command card. Mishra's command is X red. Sorcery. Choose two. Choose target player. They may discard up to X cards, then draw a card for each card they discarded. This spell deals X damage to target creature, or this spell deals X damage to target planeswalker, 
or target creature gets plus X plus O and gains haste until end of turn. So aggro things, aggro. Deal damage, hurt things, destroy something, get more cards to do more damage, to deal more hate and kill more things. Very good. This command cycle of cards um, seems very good. It's kind of like the invoke cycle from Kamigawa. It's just these cards are all going to see play in their colors. Mishra's Domination. One in a red for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. As long as you control enchanted creature, it gets plus two, plus two. Otherwise, it can't block. Oh, okay. So this is cool because it's both offensive and defensive. I love, I love enchantments like this. Um... You pay two to enchant your opponent's creature, and it can't block, so it automatically just becomes attacking only. Um, if you're scared of something, they have something big that you can't deal with right away um, that you know you can't attack into because you're red and you just can only think of one thing, and that is to attack. Um, this keeps them, your opponent, from using their scariest creatures to block what you attack. Or... If they don't have something that you're scared of, or you have something that you could just squeak over the top of, if you just had plus two, plus two, you can enchant your own creature, and then it gets buffed. So either way, it's like, my, I play red, and all I can think about is attacking you and dealing damage. And so either you deal damage with your own creature by making it bigger, or you deal damage with your own creature, because their creature can't block yours. Very cool. Very good. Next up, we have Mishra's Onslaught, three and a red for an instant. Choose one, create two one one soldier artifact creature tokens, or creatures you control get plus two plus zero until end of turn. Again, that's just aggro. Red doing red things. Pardon me, I'm starting to lose uh, my voice a tiny bit. And here, here's the returning. Returning card that everyone who plays against mono red or blue red spells decks in legacy or modern absolutely hates. It's Monastery Swift Spear. It's back. Yay. Monastery's back. So Swift Spear is one red for a 1 2 human monk with haste and prowess. So in mono red aggro and spells decks, burn decks, um, this comes out turn one almost every time. Has haste so it can attack. And then prowess, it gets plus one, plus one for every non-creature spell you play on your turn. Um, or any turn, actually. Um, until end of turn. So this this is a, a standard, standard card. Sees a lot of play. Is very difficult to deal with. Um... And it's just one of those things. One of those things. And they're reprinting it. So it's back. I wonder... No, because they they decided what was in this set a year or more ago. So I was going to say, I wonder if the success of um, Modern Horizons or Modern Masters had anything to do with this card being reprinted because they reprinted Monastery Swift Spear in that set. And... Um, people loved when they opened it. Next up, we have Obliterating Bolt. One in a red for a sorcery. Obliterating Bolt deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that target or creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile it instead. Red needs to chill. I know this set is about a giant war where everything was devastated and leveled. Um, but that's a lot. All of these colors have been very powerful looking. I, I wonder if it's all going to balance each other out. I feel like we have we have set a new recency bias where um, Dominar United was very balanced between the colors. You didn't feel like one color was overwhelmingly better than the rest. I think red was probably the worst of the five, but not by a lot. Um... 
And this, all of these colors seem very powerful, so I wonder if they're all the same amount of very powerful. Uh, next up, we have Over the Top. Five red red for a sorcery. Each player reveals a number of cards from the top of their library equal to the number of non-land permanents they control. Puts all permanents they permanent cards they revealed this way onto the battlefield and puts the rest into their graveyard. So, so the aggro player who wants to be aggro says, okay, I'm going to pay seven mana. And we're all going to put all of the permanents from the top of our library onto the battlefield. And we're just, we're just going to see who wins. You want to play controlling and slow? You want to play mid-range decks? No. We're playing aggro. You're playing aggro now, too. Because now all of your permanents are on the battlefield. And we're just going to have at her. This is the real checkmate scenario where it's like, well, let's see what you got. I'm going to put all my permanents on the battlefield. You're going to put all your permanents on the battlefield. And we're just going to smash them into each other. I just wanted to take like two, two little action figures and be like, we're just going to do this. And one of us is going to lose. That's the most, this is, this might be the most red card I've ever seen in my life. Next up we have Penregan, Pen, Penregan. Strongbull. Two and a red for a 2-3 Minotaur creature with an activated ability that says one mana, sacrifice an artifact. Penrigan Strongbull gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and deals one damage to each opponent. Nice. So that has a nice little pinger. Sacrifice artifacts. Next up we have Pyric Blast. Three and a red for an instant as an additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice a creature. Pyric Blast deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target to draw a card. That's pretty good. It is a little expensive, so you might pay four to deal like two or one damage to something. Um, but as long as you're controlling when and how that happens, I think that you know, you're going to come out on top for sure. Next up, we have Raise to the Ground. Two and a red for a sorcery. This spell can't be countered. Destroy target artifact. If its mana value was one or less, draw a card. Interesting. Next, we have Draconic Destiny. One red red for an enchantment, a mythic enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying haste and... Pay one, this creature gets plus one until end of turn. It's a dragon. Oh, so it gives it dragon breath. When enchanted creature dies, return draconic destiny to its owner's hand. So you just keep playing this on every creature you have. That is ridiculous. At least it can be countered. Next up, we have Rock Hunter. One and a red for a 3 1 human soldier with reach. That's not bad. 3 1 with reach. Next up, we have Sardian Cliff Stomper. One and a red for an 04 Minotaur Barbarian. As long as it's your turn and you control four or more mountains. Oh, this is the Lands Matter card for red. As long as it's your turn and you control four or more mountains, Sardian Cliff Stomper gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of mountains you control. So this guy could be like a, an 8 4 on turn 8 if you're playing Mono Red, which is pretty great. And they're just going to keep getting bigger the longer the game goes on. Mono Red's got a lot of tools. Sibling Rivalry. Three and a red for a sorcery. Gain control of target artifact or creature until end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste until end of turn. And then create a tapped Power Stone token. Not too bad. Not too bad. Red's always have, red always has a few steel creature cards this is um this is an interesting take on it it untaps it which is good it gains haste which is good and you get a power stone which is good um and it's only four mana i think a lot of them are around that price point so that's that's decent decent next up we have tomacool tomacool scrapsmith two and a red for a two one human artificer 
artificer creature. Uh, when Scrapsmith enters the battlefield, mill three cards. Then you may put an artifact card from among the cards milled this way into your hand. If you don't, put a 1-1 counter on Scrapsmith. This is the mill self-mill card for red. That's pretty cool. Cares about artifacts. Um, this, this land matters and the self-mill and the command cycles, they all seem really cool. And they all seem to really lean into what the color is trying to do. So I find that really intriguing. Next up, we have Tyrant of Kerr Ridges. We have a big Dorgan. Big Dorgan alert. Four red red for a four five dragon creature with flying. When Tyrant of Kerr Ridges enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to any target. And it has a pay one red Tyrant of Care Ridges gets plus one plus O oh until end of turn. So it has fire breathing as well. Oh my. So this is six mana, deal four damage, get a four five flyer. That is awesome. And it's only a rare, so it's not even a mythic. So you're going to have decks in limited with like maybe one or more of these. Oh man. Red is chock full. And the Dorgans, that's pretty good. Next up, we have Unleash Shell. Three red red for an instant. Unleash Shell deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker and two damage to that permanent's controller. I like this because it almost sounds like Unleash Hell. But you're also shooting a shell, like a artillery. That's great. I love it. Shout out to the flavor text writers. Next up, we have Fissions of Phyrexia. I've seen this art um, by Dominic Meyer. It's great art. They're a great artist. This looks really badass. Um, I'm kind of hoping that this is a playmat or a wall scroll for this set. Beautiful art. Fissions of Phyrexia is too red red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't play a card from exile this turn, create a tapped power stone token. So it's pretty good. It's all upside. Either you get you use the free card you got to draw, or you get a free mana the next turn, which will hopefully help you draw the next card you exile. And you just keep doing this turn after turn. Pretty cool. Next up, we have a Whirring Strike. Oh, this is neat. It's got the, like, action. That's pretty cool. One and a red for an instant target creature gets plus two, plus O, oh, and gains first strike and trample until end of turn. Not bad. Not bad. Then we've got the prototypes for red. We've got Blitz Automaton. Seven mana for a 6-4 artifact creature construct with haste or... Two and a red for a 3-2 artifact creature construct with haste. Pretty good. And then we've got a uh, Phalagi Dragon Engine. So this is the dragon that... Um, or I don't know if it's the dragon, but Mishra merges, melds with a dragon engine to become endgame Mishra. And they're really scary looking. Uh, Falaji Dragon Engine is 8 mana for a 5-5 five, five artifact creature dragon with flying. Pay 2, Falaji Dragon Engine gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. Or you can prototype it for 2 and a red. It becomes a 1-3 artifact creature dragon with flying and fire breathing. So, no mythic artifact yet in red. Um, then we've got Heavyweight Demolisher. For seven mana, you get an eight six artifact creature construct with menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, tap heavyweight demolisher unless you pay three. So it's kind of like the um, submerger colossus from blue. It kind of has an accumulative upkeep, but um, it doesn't. You don't lose it if you don't pay it. It just doesn't untap. Um, unearth for six red red. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Then we've got Mishra's Juggernaut. Five colorless for a 5-3 artifact creature. Juggernaut with trample. 
Mistress Juggernaut attacks each combat if able, and it has unearth for five and a red. So it's aggro as aggro can be. It's even got less health because it's so aggro, it only cares about damage, not about survival. Then we've got Mishra's Research Desk. For one colorless, you get an artifact. Pay one, tap, sacrifice Mishra's, Mishra's Artifact or Research Desk. Exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. And it has Unearth. So you can unearth an artifact. That's cool. Usually you're unearthing cards that you can attack with. Um... Next up, we have Phyrexian Dragon Engine. So this is the meld card. You can tell by this little symbol on the top left here. Um, meld is a returning mechanic where ownership of two specific cards means that you can meld the two into one card. And I'll show you what that looks like in a brief moment. I don't see the other half of this meld in this set. In this folder so um i'll have to find that and then we can come back here and talk about it uh phyrexian dragon engine is three colorless mana for a two two artifact creature phyrexian dragon so it's not really anything to write home about three mana for a two two it does have double strike so it does four damage uh whenever phyrexian dragon enter Dragon Engine enters the battlefield from your graveyard. You may discard your hand. If you do, draw three cards. And it has Unearth for three red red. And then it says down here, Melds with Mishra claimed by Gix. We have not seen Mishra yet on this list, so we will come back and talk about um, this Meld final creature when we get there. For now, we'll just move on and finish up red, jump over to green. Um, oh my god, we have a gross dog. Uh, we have Scrapwork Mutt. For two colorless, you get a 2-1 artifact creature dog. When Scrapwork Mutt enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do draw a card, and it has unearth for one and a red. Gross. I don't, why would you even call that a dog? Look at it. I mean, I know it's called Scrapwork Mutt, but putting the creature type dog on that is just rude. Okay, we've okay. This is our mythic red artifact, Skitter Beam Battalion, nine colorless mana for a four-four artifact creature construct with haste and trample. When Skitter Beam enters the battlefield, if you cast it, create two tokens that are copies of it. What? Um, uh, so you pay nine mana and you get three four fours with trample and haste. That's 12 power and toughness total. Holy cow. And then it has a prototype version for three red red. So for five mana, you get three two two tokens. For five mana, you get six power and toughness with trample and haste. That is all of these mythic artifact creatures constructs have been bonkers so far. This one is awesome. That sounds so cool. You just like set up this battalion of um, what do you call these uh, torpedo launching turrets? You just like lay out your turrets. That is intense. Yep. Um, so that's the last card for red. We're going to take, again, a quick 60-second break. We'll jump into green. Um, and then we'll probably do a little bit of a larger break before we jump into multicolored and lands and colorless and the like. Uh, thank you so much for joining us so far. Again, we'll just take a short little breather and we'll jump into the next color, which is green. Our final mono color. 